So very good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are doing well. In uh, today's session, we are going to cover the diabetic neuropathy. And this is my lecture number 69 of my lecture series. Uh, this will cover the nice guidelines surrounding neuropathy, plus also the latest recommendations from the American Diabetic Association, uh, which were released in 2024. Uh, of course, it's a very useful resource for clinical practice as well as various endocrinology board exams. And uh, I'm trying to do that through a question-based approach or a case-based approach to help uh, understand the guidelines easily and clearly. So as I mentioned, uh, here I have covered the NICE guidelines, the CG173. They were last updated in 2020 September. Plus also I have incorporated the recommendations from the ADA. Uh, which was released in the Standards of Care in Diabetes in Jan 2024. So question number one, again, these are the questions which have been asked in the previous exams. Which of the following is a typical feature of large fiber neuropathy? The options are hyperesthesia, impaired thermosensation, parasthesias, PR interval prolongation or variation, or reduced sweating. The correct answer is parasthesia. So large fiber involvement in neuropathy results in reduced proprioception and vibration sensation. And in fact, is the earliest clinically identified feature of peripheral sensory motor neuropathy. Again, a question asked in the previous exam. The primary symptom associated with large fiber dysfunction is parasthesia, as was the answer in this question. And also, there is an increased risk of developing charcoal arthropathy. Let's move on to the next one. Which of the following will suggest a diagnosis of a short fiber neuropathy? Is it muscle wasting? Is it decreased light pressure sensation? Is it diminished ankle jerks? Is it paresthesia? Is it reduced thermosensation? Take answer, reduced thermosensation. The short fiber neuropathy includes impaired thermosensation, reduced sweating, and also cold feet. Although, importantly, the reflexes are not involved. So this is somehow, I mean, some way, a uh, very important chart uh, in uh, up to date, uh, mentioning about the symptoms and signs of a distal symmetrical polyneuropathy or DSPN, and how to assess whether there is an involvement of the large or the small myelinated nerve fibers. Very frequently asked questions in the exams. So if we were to judge the function, it will be based on pressure and the balance. If it is for large whereas it will be based on the nociception and protective sensation if it was a small myelinated nerve fibers. What symptoms will a large myelinated nerve fiber involvement give? Numbness, tingling, poor balance, whereas small will cause pain, usually burning, electric shock-like pain and stabbing pain. Examination-wise, and which is clinically diagnostic, is ankle reflexes will be reduced or absent in the large myelinated nerve fiber involvement. Vibration perception will be reduced or absent. 10 gram monofilament will be reduced or absent and proprioception will be reduced or absent. On the other hand, for the small, the thermal, which is the cold or the hot discrimination will be reduced or absent and the pin prick sensation will be reduced or absent. So any of this can feature in the options in the exam. So we should be, look, uh, be on a lookout for these uh, to answer these questions based on the symptoms. Let's move on to question number three. We have a 63 year old male who was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes 20 years ago, takes metformin 1 gram twice a day, is on citagliptin 100 milligram once a day as well, has normal kidney function, attends the clinic today and complains of a painful peripheral neuropathy. As per NICE guidelines, CG173, what will you advise him? So please select one option. So does he need amitriptyline as an initial treatment for neuropathic pain? Can we give him duloxetine as an initial treatment of neuropathic pain? or gabapentin or pregabaline, or we can offer him a choice between them, like amitriptyline or duloxetine or gabapentin or pregabaline as the initial treatment for neuropathic pain. Now, this is a very important question in context of the guidelines because in the past, they had a first-line agent, which was duloxetine. But with the latest updates in the guidelines from NICE as well as from ADA, the correct answer for this will be, you can offer the patient choice of any of them, like amitriptyline, duloxetine, gabapentin, or pregaline. 
as that is recommended in the guidelines, both NICE as well as ADA, as the initial treatment for neuropathic pain. Of course, this is not the case scenario for trigeminal neuralgia because for trigeminal neuralgia, there is a different drug of choice, which is carbamazepine, which will look in these subsequent slides. Again, a very important statement. If the initial treatment is not effective or is not tolerated, offer one of the remaining three drugs and consider switching again if the second and the third drugs tried are also not effective or not tolerated. So if we offered one drug, if that is not working or not tolerated, move on to the next drug. But all the four can be offered. Consider tramadol only if acute rescue therapy is needed. Capacin cream, again, there's a specific uh, concentration, which is FDA approved, which is also asked in the exams. This is only used for localized neuropathic pain who wish to avoid or who cannot tolerate oral treatments. As I mentioned, some recommendations from the standard of care in diabetes as recommended by the ADA. Even the American Academy of Neurology endorses it. So they have suggested either gabapentinoids, which are obviously pregabalin and gabapentin, or SNRIs, which is velnaflexin, or we have the tricyclic antidepressants. They all can be considered in the treatment of pain in uh, the diabetic polyneuropathy. And recent head-to-head -head trials suggest therapeutic equivalency amongst these agents. And that's why, as per NICE as well, as per as the AD as well, we can offer the patient the choice between amitriptyline, duloxetine, uh, gabapentin, or pregabalin for that matter. Now, as per NICE guideline, CG173 again, what is the drug of choice in case of trigeminal neuralgia? I already answered this in the subsequent slide. So, as per NICE, clearly it's mentioned carbamazepine is a drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia, and we should offer this as an initial treatment for trigeminal neuralgia. Of course, if that is not effective or not tolerated or, not, or contraindicated, then we should refer the patient for the specialist pain management. Now, <clears throat> duloxetine is one drug which we should know in and out in terms of the side effects, in terms of the contraindication, because in all prior guidelines, whether it is NICE or ADA, it was initially recommended as the first line agent for diabetic neuropathy. In fact, still in some references, it comes across as the first line agent. So if they were to ask in the exam of question, what is the recommended first line agent? And we don't have an option of all the drugs as an offer for the choice. Then I think we should, we can choose duloxetine in that because still in all guidelines, as well as many references, duloxetine is the first line. So duloxetine undergoes metabolism in the liver by cytochrome P450 enzymes. It is contraindicated in uncontrolled hypertension. Then the second important contraindication is if the creatine clearance is less than 30 or EGFR is less than 30 and in patients with uncontrolled angle closure glaucoma. So this is extremely important to remember for duloxetine. Duloxetine should also be not be taken with other serotonin or non-epinephrine uptake inhibitors, including tricyclic drugs. Given the risk of a serotonin syndrome, which can happen, especially at concomitant high doses of each drug. However, duloxetine can be safely combined with pregabalin or gabapentin. So when we are talking about combinations, Duloxetine can be safely combined with pregabalin or gabapentin, but it should not be combined with the SNRIs or tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, recommended starting dose of duloxetine in patients is 20 to 30 mg per day. The dose can be titrated up to a maximum of 60 to 120 mg per day. Pain improvement may be seen as early as the first week of treatment. Patients are encouraged to take it in full stomach to avoid the risk of nausea. Question number six, we have a patient with 56-year-old man with long-standing type 2 diabetes. Current medications include dolagratide, 1.5 mg per week, and insulin glargine, 24 units HS. Complains of burning pain affecting both feet, much worse at night. Feet feel warm and peripheral pulses are easily palpable. Prior history of congestive cardiac failure two years ago has suboptimal glycemic control with an HBNC of 7.5%. And most importantly, has a reduced renal function, EGFR of less than 30, around 28 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. So in this case scenario, which will be a best treatment for this patient's painful neuropathy? Should we give the patient capsaicin cream, uh, pregabalin, duloxetine, amitriptyline, or carbamazepine? So the correct answer in this scenario will be pregabalin. Why? Because duloxetine is clearly contraindicated in renal impairment where EGFR is less than 30. Pregabalin and gabapentin both can be used. 
But of course, a gabapentin is not in the option, pregabalin is in the option. It will definitely need a dose reduction, but it still can be used. Amitriptyline also becomes out because patient has a prior history of CCF and it should be avoided in patients with congestive cardiac failure. So with that, that's the end of my free view. If you want to listen to this full session of this lecture of diabetic neuropathy, uh, please subscribe to my full lecture series. Currently, there are 69 lectures in my lecture series. Uh, I will be keep uploading new and new lectures in the coming weeks. And uh, the good thing is that with the subscription, you get lifetime access to the existing lectures, existing 69 lectures, plus all my upcoming lectures in the coming weeks and months and years. So for subscription, please email me on my email ID, which is mazirules at gmail.com, or you can WhatsApp me on 0097155743 uh so these are again the details for my detailed lecture series total i have 69 lectures in my lecture series so thank you so much